The next speaker listed is Elizabeth Leary. Did I say that right? Robert, my parents still live 
Jefferson School and have been for the past 13, 14 years. Um, I'm the one that you send your babies to when you send them at five years old. And I can tell you without any hesitation that every teacher at my school has loved the children that are sent to them. The ones that are bright and shining and sitting on the front row with their hand raised. And also the ones that are not bright are shiny, that maybe are not clean and are sitting on the back row with their head down because they did not go to bed last night. Um, I think that we need to be careful how we measure. Everything now is measured. EOG schools are measured. Teachers are measured. I am measured by so many different things, by so many different people who are not in our classrooms who have not been in our classrooms, who have not come to volunteer to read to a student whose mama won't. We need to be careful as a community how we measure our children. There is more out there that needs to be measured. You cannot measure the character or the conviction of a student by their EOG scores. I think that our community needs to combine and we need to create a fabric where we all can live and we can live in community and find a common ground. I may not agree with what you have to say or what you have to say, but I believe if we want this world, not just our community, but our whole world, to be a better place, then we each have our own responsibility in finding where that common ground is. Um, I think that it's very easy to throw stones um, at houses that you may not be living. There are problems, of course there are. This is not a perfect world. We do not have perfect children. I have two teenagers. I know for sure they are not perfect. But I do believe that we can find perfection if we work together to find compromise and to make sure that our expectations are set high, that the safety of our children is important, it's foremost, that we hold our teachers in esteem that we tell our children that these teachers are important and this is a wonderful profession to go into, but not to get rich. We do not go in it to get rich, but we do go in it for respect. And I think the community needs to be careful that they respect the Cleveland County employees and the campuses that we have here, and we need to come together and find are all our voices that can be beautiful together. And the next speaker is John Champney. My name is John Champney. I'm the orchestra director at Shelby High School. I'm also cross-country coach, swim coach, and I'm also a member of the Air Force in the South. And I play, have a lot of roles in my life. I'm also a father, um, a kid that will, that will go to Cleveland County Schools. And, um, but I want to kind of talk to you about orchestra today because I'm not even sure everyone knows we have an orchestra in, in Cleveland County at three of our high schools. Um, and actually a pretty phenomenal one at that. So I'm just going to kind of share with you in my 10 years here at Shelby High what we've done and where we're going. Um, first of all, Shelby High School Orchestra was featured in a PBS documentary with Mark Wood about seven years ago. Put us in a national spotlight. Pretty fantastic. We performed a concert for over 5,000 Cleveland County residents. Who would have thought 5,000 people would have come out to an orchestra concert? Pretty fantastic. Um, we've also performed with Grammy Award winning composer Alistair Fraser and with Mark, uh, Mike Marshall over at Malcolm Brown Auditorium. Half the house. We've given these opportunities to our students because that's what we should be doing. And that's what we are doing. We've performed at Carnegie Hall twice in the last five years. You want to talk about life-altering opportunity and experience for those students. Probably number one on a lot of their lists. 
Um, all those things were possible because of the support, number one, of our community, helped us raise money to go, to go on these ventures. Our faculty, who supported those students being gone, sometimes a week at a time out of their classes. And our school board, for recognizing the importance for letting those kids, first of all, be in that spotlight and experience something that puts them probably in a category that maybe less than 1% of high school students in America can say they do. And they're from right here, Cleveland County Schools. What are we doing now? Well, because of our performances at Carnegie, we've been invited next year to perform at Strathmore, which is outside of uh, D.C. It's the home of the Baltimore Symphony and part-time home for the National Symphony Orchestra. We are thrilled to death to go and represent Cleveland County on a national stage once again. And the kids are pumped because they, they know what their, their predecessors have done in the orchestra and the experiences that they've had, and they want that experience for themselves. They want to be able to walk into that college interview. They want to be able to go into that scholarship interview, and they want to be able to talk about something that no one else can talk about. How many kids in North Carolina going for a Moorhead scholarship think you could talk about playing at Carnegie Hall? One. Right here, Living County. We had seven students from Shelby High School make Western Regional Orchestra this year. And those students, um, you know, we had seven other schools in the region that more students make it than, than Shelby, but they were all 4A schools in the Greensboro and Charlotte area. We have two students right now that occupy two of the eight seats in the front row of the Charlotte Symphony Youth Orchestra. One of them is studying the summer at the Bar Summer Music Center with the world famous violinist Isak Perlman. And I'm going to close with why do we do these things? Why would we not? Why would we not push our kids? to go out and challenge themselves in every aspect. My way to push them is in the arts. That's what I do. I'm part of the team at Shelby High School. We have our other teachers who teach the core academics. That's their folks we have on coaches. We're helping to promote and create well-rounded individual students, making them multidimensional. And we're doing that at Shelby High School. I'm proud to be a part of that. Thank you for listening to me this evening. And, uh, were athletes. The Fell House Town at Shelby High is named for them. I write documentaries about growing up here. Sometimes I show them on Channel 19. And um, our teachers that we still have with us have played a big part in our life as young people and as adults. They still come to our reunions. And I said, I said in one of the documentaries, they held their hands for a few years, and they held their hearts for a lifetime. Everything that each of you said about the school system here, I thoroughly agree with it. That teachers, if parents teach you to walk, the teachers teach you to run. They open your eyes to dreams that you never knew you could possibly have. And I don't think that most of us have any problem whatsoever with believing in the teachers and believing in the school system. I think we're in the problem lies, folks, is the getting the community and the school administration or the school board to get on the same page. I go to the commissioners meetings and sometimes I feel that there is a bit of an arrogance that maybe since we elected these officials 
that we should let them take the ball and run with it, which indeed, you know, we want them to do that. But there are times that, th that there are disparities in agreement, and I see that. And some of the things, of course, involve the financing. Doesn't it always? One of the problems I think that we have right now is when I go back and look at my alma mater, I am so proud of that. I'm talking at Shelby. I'm so proud of all the things that have been done there with the ball fields and everything. And I see some of the schools out in the county that don't have the same quality and expenses. And we definitely need to see that these children have the same opportunities. I think that's wonderful, uh, Mr. Shanley, about orchestra at Shelby High School. I'm proud to say that my brother's grandson was one of, I'm not supposed to mention names, but his name's Trip Camp, was one of those kids that got to go to Carnegie Hall. But I'd like to see these other schools, kids get to go to Carnegie Hall. And what, we, what we've got to do is see that all of the schools have the same opportunity as the city schools do. I know the city schools have more money than maybe the, the people from the county from that is poured into it because you've got a city uh, in Kings Mountain, you've got a city in Shelby. But we've got to see that Ernst and Crest have equal. Now, one, I want to take just another minute and mention something. In looking at the expenses, because we're going to need a new North Shelby school, we're going to need uh, uh, auditoriums and other things at some of these other schools. And I started looking into the finances, and this is one thing I would like the school board to keep a close watch on, because in looking back at, at the, four, the last four projects that have been done here in Clinton County that have involved buildings that the school children are in, and I'm making reference to the Early College High School at the LeGrand Center and the Turning Point Academy that's located within the uh, administration building, and the American Legion, what was done down at Shelby High School, ball fields, and so forth, and the middle school. The same architect firm did all of these. Now, I'm just referring to these last four. The same architect firm also did back there the middle uh, intermediate school in Kings Mountain. But when the only one that I have laid eyes on and, and, and for the figures is the um, administration building because these figures were public and I saw them in the paper and I looked into it. This building was reputed to be 8.9 million. I think it came in maybe a little higher than that. But the architect fee was 759,000. I believe I'm quoting that right. And then it was another 400 and something thousand for the engineering. And that seemed very, very high to me for so the building, I think it's 140,000 square feet, and only 10,000 was new construction. It was the corridors that joined the three. But what I'm saying is, that from some of the other architect firms here have not had an opportunity. I don't have any, any gain in this because I don't have any, any people kin to me architects. But I'm saying some of the other architect firms have not had an opportunity to, and one t firm told me that Springmore School, which is more than 20 years old, is the last one that they had an opportunity to build. So I'm saying let's tighten our belts and get the most for our money so that we can bring these other schools up to level for these city schools. And if it takes, uh, you school board members, if it takes getting more bids, I heard the superintendent say, I'm close, I heard the superintendent say, 
re recently that I called up and he called the name of the architect when he was talking about the Shelby Middle School. I don't even think that is legal. There, there's something called the Minnie Brooks Law that you have to notify if you're a government's looking for an architect. But anyway, let's try to see that we can get the most for our money so that we can get the best for our children. Thank you.